I would like to invite Kanishka Chaudhary uh, on the stage to give her talk on uh, iOS and how you can go about iOS learnings in a way that you can exponentially grow yourself. So Kanishka is an iOS consultant at LJI, which is a company based out of Hyderabad. She's just 18, and she completed her 12th class. After that, she got a full-time job. And now she's a co-founder at Swift Anytime. And I think that's enough of her intro. And I would just I'd like to hand over the mic to Kanishka. Can you have a user on the side? Thank you, guys. So yeah, uh, today we are going to learn about different strategy, strategies to grow as an iOS developer, conventional and unconventional ways. So as a, at the beginner stage, we would have all heard of those popular Udemy courses and YouTube channel. Before we start off, why don't you all share the resources you used when you were a beginner? Like, may it be a YouTube channel, may it be a Udemy course, anything. So would anyone like to share any of the initial resources they used? 100 years of Swift, yeah, that's a great. Hacking with Swift, the classics. And yeah, that's one of the classic courses I was going to talk about. The Angela U course. And it's from a website, Udemy, which is literally always on sale. I visited it in 2018. It was on sale. It's been five years, and it's still showing that all the courses are 80% off and get it on sale. So yeah, this is one of the classic courses we use to get started with iOS development and learn more. So at the start, I mean, we are all going to go for these resources. And then we would uh, change our ways. Maybe we, we would go for project-oriented learning. We would go for tutorial, the whole tutorial thing. We could do technical writing and everything. But before that, before we even start that, let's talk uh, about connecting the dots by Swift Anytime. And by Swift, Steve Jobs, not Swift Anytime. So I mean, as we are developers, and we follow Apple religiously, we all are would have heard this speech. So for, let's, let's let me see. If the volume is, you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path, and that will make all the difference. So that was about connecting the dots by Steve Jobs back then, and I guess it was like it was needed because we all connect the dots by learning in some way. So one of the ways to learn more is to stay active in on these communities like Discord, Slack, Twitter, and help other people solve their problems. I mean, one of the great ways that you could uh, learn more is by being a giver rather than a taker. So you could help people solve problems and get a different perspective of what other people are working on and help other. You could also create impact by just helping other people. You could join. Lot, there are a lot of Discord communities and Slack channels where you could join. Even Swift Anytime has its own Discord community where people ask questions and we help each other solve it. So yeah, being helpful is it always works. Then it's we live in a in an age, especially in technology, like this whole tech field is where every six months new technologies would come and uh, the old would go outdated. Like some code I wrote in 2019 wouldn't be even valid today because every year Apple would have WDC and they would deprecate some syntax and then we'd have to learn new things. So instead of just learning when it's needed, it's important to stay connected. And one of the ways is by newsletters or maybe you keep checking the documentation regularly. And that's how you stay updated in the field and you're not behind because you know what's going on. You know what's the latest thing, the latest syntax and everything. Uh, one of this unconventional we have tried, even at LGI, is that checking other PRs of existing projects. So let me give you an example. Suppose there is a GR, like fellow ticket, and someone like you or someone else, like it's assigned to someone, and they raise a PR on that. So what you could do is check out before, like 
go through the task and see what would, how would you solve it. Then you check that other person's plan and see in what, what approach did they take. I mean, there are a million ways to do the same thing. You just have to understand different ways and see which one is the best, understand different perspectives. So one like unconventional way is by checking other PRs, seeing how other people would do the same stuff and how would you do it. So even without coding, you could, but just by checking out the pull requests and everything, you would know about different approach, or maybe check out PRs of senior developers and see how they code, how is the code structured, how do they document it. And there is technical writing, which is something which I have tried personally. If you go to Swift anytime, like most of the Swift UI articles would have been contributed by me. So it's like learning is, you, you could know that you have learned it well when you teach it to others. And when you write, you need very, you need very, very clear concepts, concise concepts. So I guess technical writing could be a great start for learning, but like especially as an intermediate, you could write articles on Medium or Dev2, or you could start your own blog. So yeah, technical writing is also another way to start learning. So OK, this is something too unconventional, maybe out of comfort zone, that is trying to learn other basics of another language or another kind of development. Like, you never know what Swift has special when you ch unless you check out like other, like Ender development or Flutter development or native, like cross-platform development. That will give you a more perspective of what Swift specializes in. And this will also help you in like connecting the dots, which we talked about earlier. OK, there's another thing. I guess we, some people also answered about it earlier. It was about knowing the basic documentation in and out. All the tutorials we see, they are somehow derived from documentation. All the Stack Overflow answers are derived from documentation. So at least for the basic, like the Swift Foundation and UIKit Foundation, Swift UI Foundation, you could just check out the documentation, see the basics, see the variable there. So you wouldn't even require to, you wouldn't even be required to check Stack Overflow next time or go through an article because you literally know the so the original source that is the Apple documentation. And with that, I also want to point out about human interface guidelines. Uh, also, this I forgot to mention this command. Just this command, command shift zero on Xcode, which opens the documentation, could open doors of a lot of learning and understanding the basics better. Another thing I want to point out is human interface guidelines. I don't like as iOS developers. Of course, we care about the code, but at the end of the day, the app is going to be delivered to the consumer, and for that, you would have to understand the UI and UX. So Apple has its own guideline. It's called human interface guidelines, which has like all the UI do's and don'ts, the basics. So I don't know how many of iOS developers have checked it out. It would be great if like people raised their hand would have checked it out. Okay, that's a lot of people there. So yeah, it's important to check it out. And even at Swift Anytime, if you check out any articles, we would have always mentioned like the summary of human interface guidelines. We always encourage for people to check it out. So they know the basics of UI and UX. So you're not just a developer. You also know how to deliver good products. So this another way is like if, it, is it, if there is any repository or framework you use a lot, you could just make some change, document it, have a better structure, and raise PRs for it. Okay, another this is this may be a dangerous one. You could go down this path when like when you are intermediate, like mid-intermediate after that, it's working with legacy code bases. Now, I mean this is hell of a task because people would have built code for from years with, with certain mindset, with certain framework, with certain architecture. So going through that, understanding that itself is a huge task. And here I guess I have one opinion which I, or like a theory I would like to share. So building things from scratch, like if you're making an app from scratch, you're learning about the technicalities and about how a framework works. So like if I'm making a clock app, I would know from scratch that this is how the timer works in Swift here, or how the UI works. But while you're working with existing code bases, especially of like uh, medium scale projects, you would learn more about the system architecture. If they have used MVM, if MVVM, if they have used MVC, and how it's corporated there, how they have used enums and classes and structs. So I guess that's this is my theory that if you want to learn about practicality of a framework, you could go about building things. If you want to learn more about architecture and system design, you could go working with code bases, maintaining code bases, and 
uh, adding more features to some existing apps. This is a very like creative thought process. At Swift any time, whenever there's an interview, I always ask this question. Pick any social media, the home page of it, and try to recreate it. What mental process would you go through to recreate it in Swift? So this kind of shows how practical you are and like a very a practical approach of understanding how apps are created. So suppose this is like an Instagram page. How would you go about creating the stories tab? Or how would you go about creating the update? What would you use for that? Or uh, how would you go about the image ratio? It's square. So how would you, if someone is posting a l larger picture, how would you do that? So that, that thought process, just if, even if you're not coding, just that pro thought process itself makes you a better creator, a better designer, rather than just an iOS developer. So creating through, going through thought processes of the daily apps could also help you becoming a better developer and learning more. Okay, I guess we discussed about it. So yeah, I guess it's time to revise what we started off with. You can only connect the dots looking backward. You cannot connect it looking forward. So trying out different things, trying out unconventional ways, trying out even out of like iOS just to understand iOS better. You would never know how it would come back to you and you would then realize, oh, I learned this few months ago and now it's coming to use. So yeah, you are just keep learning, stay hungry, stay foolish. Someone here even wore a shirt like that. Like that really caught my eyes. So yeah, till then, eat, sleep, sift, and time repeat.